young men, killing people. Their fathers are missing. Amen. Their fathers are missing their lives. Fathers should take up their rightful place and bring forth the next generation for the world. Amen. Um, my theme this morning, the climax of Father's Day, is taken from John chapter 15, verses 1 to 17. John chapter 15, verses 1 to 17. And I've entitled it, The Father as a Gardener of His Household. Amen. The Father as a Gardener of His Household. You see from this scripture that Jesus was talking about his relationship with, with God, God, with God Almighty, who is calls him like a father. Amen. And what the father does to his life. So let's quickly jump into the scripture. He said, I am the true vine, true grapevine, and my father is the gardener. Hallelujah. Verse 2. He cuts off every branch of mine that doesn't produce fruit. And he prunes the branches that do bear fruit. So they will produce even more. So let's stop over there. Amen. So this is what Jesus is saying that the Father is God does. And there's something that you should learn. He said that anything that doesn't produce fruit, cut it, you know. And the things that it produces fruit, it promotes it. Amen. And you cannot do that, you know, as a gardener, uh, we have a lot of garden at the back of our house and you see that every day my wife goes there to water it and I pull the weeds and you know, use the, some thing to <laughs> stir the soil, you know, stir the soil up, you know, every day. The day you stop, you see the weeds going. Amen. So fathers must be present to do these things in, their, in the lives of their household. Amen. You cannot be absent father. It's dangerous. The kids may be reward. Amen. When we, we normally leave all this job for the women to do. Most fathers do that. You must be present in your children's life and when they are going, the, the bad behavior they take us, you prune it out. Amen. The good things, I like, keep encouraging them to be better person. I see uh, uh, Deacon Eric taking his children to watch basketball, play basketball and encouraging them and giving them feedback. This is what fathers are supposed to do. Amen. We cannot bring children to this world and, and leave the responsibility of raising them in the hands of their mother. You see that the children grow and they don't know you. Amen. Well, uh, my wife is a hospice nurse. She takes care of people who are about to die. And, and, and some of them, they, they, before they, they die, they tell her, that, hey, did you spend time with your children? So that's one thing I, I regret. I regret I didn't spend time. I was chasing the money in the world. I was thinking about I was chasing ladies, chasing money, building houses, and I neglected my children. Today I'm dying with my children. That they don't even care. Amen. It's, 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 that, it's not that children are, don't like their, their fathers, but if you're not in the lives of your, father, your, your children, they will not be there for you. Nothing will move them. Amen. Let's, 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 um, let's change our mindset as, as fathers and be there. You know, in those days, um, our, our fathers think that when they pay school fees and they provide feeding and provide housing, that's it. They, all they need is to make sure that there's money in the house. They're not present to provide the needed support. Amen. You know, if you don't do that, you can't. And, and when I say absent father, I'm not talking about a father who is not only not staying with the, the child. Some people are living the same roof with their children, but they are absent. Yes. You know, they, 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 they don't even know the birthdays of their children. <laughs> Let alone celebrate it. Amen. They don't do homework with their children. They are not there. You know, the things that we, our fathers didn't do for us, we shouldn't do, the, uh, we should do that for our kids. Amen. Yeah. You know, when, I always say this, that I went, uh, they, I was filing for my, my parents and they said we should bring uh, evidence that they are my parents, uh, otherwise we do the DNA. I have pictures, tons of pictures with my mom. We looked everywhere, we didn't see any picture with my father. <laughs> yeah. And we're in the same house. We never thought that we should go out there and take pictures. You know? Yes. And that is the African father that we most... We did, I didn't have picture. I have to go and do DNA test that cost a lot of money and delay the process. Amen. Before I was, I was able to prove that it's my father. <laughs> yeah. They said, just bring a picture of you and your father. Childhood. There's not. Hallelujah. Meanwhile, we're always there in the house. 
So you can be, be under the same roof with your, with your children and be an absent father. And if you're absent, you cannot do these things that uh, uh, God does to. God, uh, John chapter uh, 15 verse 2 said, you cannot be pruning, you cannot see the bad traits of your children and change them. We must be agents of transformation. Amen. In the lives of our household. Amen. And how do we do that? How do you do that? Let's continue. It said, you have already been pruned and purified by the message I have given you. Amen. Before, uh, last time, uh, Elder Enes said that you can only give what you have. Amen. If you, you yourself, you are not disciplined. You don't have the word of God in you. There's no way you can share with you. One of the things that helps in raising children is the word of God. There is no better word you can give to your child than the word of God. Everything about life is in the Bible. How to be successful, how to be good, how to be caring, how to be lovely. How, you know, we are raising children that are going to marry somebody's daughter. Don't raise somebody who going to be a burden on somebody's daughter. Amen. They should go there and be great fathers. But you yourself, you have to be a great father before you can teach your child to be a great father. Hallelujah. Yeah, he said that, uh, rem- oh, go to the previous one, the verse 3. Let me have it here. He said, we have already been pruned, amen, and purified by the message I have given you. When you go to Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 3, 13, Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13, he said, the beauty of a man is to fear God and keep his word. Amen. That is the beauty of a man. The beauty of a man is to fear God and keep his commandments. Amen. So before you start disciplining your children, you know, before you start raising good household, you yourself have to be somebody who fears God and keeps his commandments. Before you can even share the word. If you don't know the word, you cannot share it. Hallelujah. So, so let's make it a point as men. We don't read the Bible. You know, every church, the majority of the members are women. Men, men, we don't like to, things of God, we, we are so much occupied with making money and taking care of bills. I tell you that the children will not remember how hardworking you were. They remember the time you spent with them reading the Bible, doing homework and watching TV. And the children don't care how much, how, uh, how hardworking you were. Hallelujah. We should make time. You know, making money is very good. We need to take care of our uh, business in the house. But we must make time and study the word of God so that it can impact on them. Hallelujah. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 6 to 9. Tells us how that when you have the word of God, what you should do about raising. Can you take us to Deuteronomy? Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 6 to 9. It said, and you must commit yourself wholeheartedly to these commands that I am giving you today. Let's go. Repeat them again and again to your children. That's the word of God. Talk about them when you are at home and when you are on the road, when you are going to bed and when you are getting up. Hallelujah. That means every second you should be impacting the children with the word of God. Let's go verse uh, verse 8. To them, they tie them, let me use it, tie them to your hands and wear them on your forehead as a reminder. Amen. So before you do that in verse 7, you yourself, you have to tie them around you. That means you have to be well, well vested in the word of God. I mean, you know, write them on your doorpost of your house and on your gates. Hallelujah. This is basically what we shall, uh, in terms of the word of God. We should, you know, how many of our fathers will share the word of God with our children? Mostly it's the women who do that. Man, you know, let's, let's be of the habit of reading the word of God, and also sharing it. And by so doing, you see that some of the mistakes that um, they, will, they, are, they will be exposed to, they know what to do when they are confronted with those mistakes. They go to the school, they are teaching them all kinds of things. Eh? Yeah, so if they are vested in the word of God that you have given to them, you know, they go there, they know what to do. Hallelujah. The things that, killings and all that, that is happening in the country, you know, killing of school children and all that, people in the mall, these people, they are, they, they, their fathers were missing their lives. You know, they didn't impact. But we will not do that to our children. Hallelujah. We will not do that to our children. 
you know, and, and when you do that, there are benefits of sharing the word. You learning the word and sharing it to your children, there are benefits. And one of the benefits is the fruitful. You know, in, 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 the children will be very fruitful. Luke chapter 6, verse 43 to 45. Luke 6, 43 to 45. You know, your, that's what he said. Let's look at Luke chapter 6. Verse. He says that a good tree can't produce bad fruit. Amen. Once you, 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 you plant good seeds in your children, there is no way they will go back, they will go out to be bad fruit. Hallelujah. And a bad tree cannot produce good fruit. Amen. You know, so you get what he's teaching. Hallelujah. And let's go on. A tree is identified by its fruit. Hallelujah. A tree is identified by its fruit. Seeds are never gathered from thorn bushes. And grapes are not picked up from bramble bushes. Hallelujah. A good person produces good things from the treasury of a good heart. And an evil person produces evil things from the treasury of an evil heart. What you say flows from what is in your heart. Hallelujah. Basically, the, you, if, uh, you can't get a bad person, a bad fruit when you, you've invested good stuff in them. Amen. You, you yourself have to be a good person, invested in the word of God, and when you invest, they, they will bear fruit. You know, they say train up a child the way you should go. When they grow, they won't depart from it. You know, so you, you, kids that are raised well, you cannot, they, they, unless something happens to them, but typically they go up and be champions of the world. Amen. And, and that is what I'm calling upon fathers today. That we shouldn't neglect, neglect or uh, uh, delegate the duties of uh, our, as fathers to our wives. Amen. Or for other people to take care of them. It's our duty, it's our principal duty to raise our children to be very fruitful. Amen. And also they become purified as we read before um, in uh, John chapter 15. But let's read James chapter 1 verse 27. James chapter 1 verse 27. They become purified. You know, yeah, when somebody is purified, they're not corrupted. Yeah, oh, sorry. When somebody is purified, they're not corrupted by the things of the world. Hallelujah. When somebody is purified, they're not uh, corrupted. It's a pure and genuine religion in the sight of God. The Father means caring for orphans and widows. Why? Why orphans and widows? Because orphans don't have fathers. And widows don't have husbands. So it's our duty to care for those people. Amen. It's not only your children and your wife you should be bothered about. Those people too, they, they, they don't have the father figures in their lives. So if you know somebody who is an orphan, you, of course there's no orphan who has a father. You should be the father of them. Amen. And widows too, they don't have husbands. Otherwise they will not be widows. Hallelujah. You should be husbands to them. And, and, and in, the, in this distress and uh, refusing to... Hey, Sorry, widows, in their distress and refusing to let the world corrupt you. Amen. Yes, so, um, yes, so the, when you are purified, the world cannot corrupt you. Things that corrupt things in the world are many, especially in this country. You can easily be corrupted. Hallelujah. You know, we find uh, 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 when the, in Ghana, the, the corrupt cases come out and you see men of God involved in money can corrupt you. Everybody loves money. I love money. But if you are if you are vested in the word of God, you don't take that money that doesn't belong to you. And that is what you impact in your children. They will not steal. They will not be greedy. They will not envy people. All those things corrupt us. They don't make us pure. Hallelujah. So we should we should train our children to be content in life. No, they shouldn't be in competition with people, you know. It's just stressful and it amounts to nothing. Hallelujah. We should train our children to be pure, to live a pure life. When we do that, they grow up to be responsible children. Hallelujah. Uh, I might, I might produce somebody. Let's go on to uh, John chapter 15. Let's go to John chapter 15, verse, where, where have I ended up? John chapter 15. John, John, John chapter 15. Yes. Uh, so, re, uh, remain in me and I will remain in you. For a branch cannot produce fruit if it is served from the vine. 
Amen. And you cannot be fruitful unless you remain in. This is the dependency of Jesus Christ as Christian. <laughs> that we should learn how to depend on Jesus Christ. You know, uh, uh, we are, we, 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 Jesus must be in you. Hallelujah. You know, when you have Jesus in you and you're raising children, it's so wonderful. Hallelujah. As Christians, as, as um, men, in the, our fathers in our, in our midst, we should let Jesus be in us. Let's go on. Yes, I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Dependency on Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We should learn how to depend. We stress so much. You know, men are people who don't share their views. Women, whatever they, is wrong with them, they tell you a peace of mind. Some of us don't know how to tell our peace of mind. But most men don't do that. Amen. You know, men are trained to stomach. Men don't even cry. If you're a man and you cry, it's, it's even a shy of thing. Hallelujah. So we are, we are, we are, we are, we, are so we, we cry inside us. And that's why we are faced with all this depression and stress and all that. But we should learn how to cast our burdens to Jesus Christ and, and totally depend on him. Amen. He said, without him, you can't do anything. Total dependency on Jesus. As father, we should do that. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's go on. Verse 6. And anyone who does not remain in me is thrown away like a useless branch and withers. Such branches are gathered into a pile to be burned. Amen. You know, when Jesus was, one day Jesus was walking and saw a, a, a tree that was not bearing fruit. It was so mad that he cursed the tree. Hallelujah. So when, when you are not bearing fruit, you know, when you are not being fruitful, you know, you are not bearing fruit, you are not flourishing in, law, in the Lord, you know, you are, you are burnt, as it's described in verse 6. You are burnt out, you are, use, you are termed useless. Amen. We should invest in the word of God. Amen. We should invest in, in the things of God and we'll be fruitful. Hallelujah. The next thing I want to talk about is prayer. Let's go on and let's see. Verse 7. But if you remain in me and my words remain in you, you may ask for anything you want and it will be granted. Hallelujah. Let's remain there. You may ask for anything in the Lord and you'll be granted. So you don't just pray and things are granted. You have to first remain in God. You have to stay away from sin. You have to be pure and remain in God. Then when you pray and ask for things, God will grant it. Hallelujah. You know, some, sometimes uh, we, we worry why prayers are not... We, no, prayer doesn't result in immediate... Uh, you know, when you pray for a job, it's not as, soon, as soon as you pray, somebody will call you and give you a job. No. But prayer does something very important. And I want us to look at... Uh, Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 to 7. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 to 7. Hallelujah. Philippians 4, 6 to 7. He said, don't worry about anything. You know, the, we worry so much as men. We have so much things to achieve in life. He says, don't worry about anything. He said, pray about everything. Amen. That's what Jesus did. Jesus prayed about everything. Before he started his ministry, as soon as he was baptized, he left the water, he went to the wilderness and started praying. Hallelujah. When he was about to uh, make decisions, select the uh, apostles among the disciples. In, in Luke chapter 6, verse 12, he went to the mountain and prayed. Amen. Even in Hebrews chapter 5, he said he, he prayed and was crying. Oh, Jesus, oh, son of God. Then I want about you and I. Amen. We should make prayer part of our life. So Jesus was crying and praying to God. When he was about to be crucified, he said he prayed and, and his sweat became like blood. Amen. So prayer is very, very important. He said, don't worry about anything. He said, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all that he has done. Let's go on. Then you will experience God's peace. Amen. You will experience the peace of God. The peace of God is different from the peace of man. The peace of God is not, uh, peace of man is uh, conditional. Peace of man is, uh, uh, is subject to, you know. If you don't do this, you don't get it. Hallelujah. But the peace of God, he said what? Which exceeds anything we can understand. You know, the peace of God. You know, when you pray, you pray, you pray, you don't, maybe you don't get the immediate answer, but you get the peace of God. Amen. The peace of God that human beings cannot understand. The peace of God that exceeds our understanding. That's what you get. And, and, and 
that's one thing. Well, let me see. His peace will guard your heart and do what? And your mind as you live in Christ Jesus. He do those two things. It will guard your your mind. It, peace that guards your mind and your heart is stress free. Amen. So as soon as you pray, that's what the peace of God does. Before the prayer is answered, you get peace of God. And that will, will guard your heart and your mind. Amen. So that you, 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 people will not understand why you are, you, are, you are struggling in life, but you are happy. People will not understand why, why uh, uh, you are sick, but you are smiling. People will not understand. You know, when you pray and pray, that's what prayer does. Maybe the answer is not immediately known, but you get a peace from God. Amen. When human beings give you peace, be careful. It comes with conditions. Amen. It's not even everlasting. So what? Well, people make peace. Uh, you know, the, uh, I was looking at the Ukraine and Russia war. They give a peace three days and boom, they, started, <laughs> they started the war again. Amen. But peace from God is everlasting. Amen. So we, when we pray, that is what you get. Instead of stressing and stressing about things that you want to achieve and you have not achieved, and, and, and some of us get the blood pressure and hypertension and all that, we should, we should focus our energy in prayer. Amen. In prayer, you know, uh, uh, not all the things I want I've, I've, I've met, you know. I wanted a son, I've not gotten a son. Sometimes I stress. But I still have to pray. Amen. Yes, maybe next time I'll get a son. Hallelujah. You know, so prayer, prayer gives you an uh, immediate answer. The immediate thing is that it gives you peace of God. Amen. So, man, we shouldn't stress. Amen. Uh, there was a survey done in Ghana, uh, and they realized that, uh, you know, Ghana, the pension age is 60 years. After 60 years, you can't work unless you are doing your own business. And they realized that uh, um, uh, men die less than 10 years after pension. Men die less than 10 years after pension. And women can live up to 80 years and 90 years. And the men are dying because we, uh, they, they, we worry too much about achieving. In fact, their youthful time, they used to chase women and enjoy life and blow time. Before they realize that they are approaching pension, then they realize that, hey, I don't have anything. I'm in a, I'm in a rented place. And, and, and that time, their kids are all gone. They don't, they don't have any relationship with their children. And so they, after pension, they will be thinking and thinking and depressing and stressing. And you know, at least in this country, they force you to be responsible. You know, amen. The country has rules that force you to be responsible. In Ghana, you can have children, all, especially those policemen and, and, and the drivers, commercial drivers. Every station they go, every town they go, they have a child over there. Amen. They, they just give birth all over the place. Like, <laughs> amen. And they are responsible. Before they go, they don't, none of their children know them. And they'll be stressing and stressing and dying. But instead of stressing and distressing, no matter the situation, pray. Amen. Because prayer gives you the peace of God, not the peace of man. Amen. Let's go on in John chapter 15. Where are you? Where are you? Um, John 12. No, um, move on. Oh no, let's go on. Let's go on. Okay, when you produce much fruit, you are my true disciples. This brings great joy, great glory to the Father. Let's move on. And he said, I have loved you even as the Father has loved me. Amen. This is a controversial thing I'm going to talk about. He said, I have loved you even as the Father has loved me. The problem with men is that he said, you should remain in my love. The problem with men is that we don't know how to love. Amen. We are not romantic. Hallelujah. Men, men, when, when the marriage gets to a certain age in life, then the love is also coming down. Amen. But we should find ways of rejuvenating the love. Amen. Uh, I went to uh, the Okori's house uh, during the Thanksgiving last year. And was, uh, I was looking at him and, and the wife is, oh, honey, uh, it's good that. And I'm, I said, hey. Uh, anytime I call my wife, Madua, uh, you know, you're not, you're not playing. I, 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 said, I, have to, I have a lot to learn. Amen. And the day I'll be romantic, I call her Jocelyn. You know, so, but, but I saw the way they were communicating. You know, that is so beautiful. And that is something that I learned from that place, that it should be a little lovely. Amen. And, uh, and, 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 and Paul so said, so said that what? A man should love their wives. Amen. If you love your wife, your, sister, your children will learn. They will learn how to love. They will go and be, especially if you have sons, they will go and love their wives. 
You don't show love to your wife, your children will not learn that. Amen. Let the children learn from us. Amen. They don't, you don't have to tell your child that you should love your wife. <laughs> no, they will see you the way you love your wife. They, they learn a lot. That's what they know. They, they, they observe and learn. Amen. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 20. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25 to 28. Ephesians 5, 25 to 28. Then for husband, this means love your wife. Amen. Just as Christ loved the church, he gave, his, he gave up his life for her, for her. Amen. Let's go on. To make her holy and clean, washed by cleansing of God's word. Amen. He, he, did not, he did this to present her for himself as a glorious church, without a spot or wrinkle. Amen. Some people are beauties. Hallelujah. You see their wives full of spots and wrinkles. Amen. If you marry my daughter and after a few months I see a spot here, I'm taking my daughter back. Amen. Amen. Yeah, I have five of them. Yeah. So we, 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 should, we, should be, we should be lovely. Amen. We shouldn't present our wife full of spots and wrinkles. Some people are abused. Some people are in a relationship full of abuse. Amen. Some men are wicked and I don't know why they marry. So be living with people and they be abused. How can you marry somebody and abuse the person? I know women are pro- pro- sometimes they're provocative. The worst that they can tell you. But as a man, if you are full of love, even you during the, those times of the man that they are so provocative, you show compassion to them. Amen. We should, we should, we should be lovely. We shouldn't have. I, I should, nobody should see your wife unless she, she, she fell down at workplace or something. But you shouldn't present your wife with spots and wrinkles on her. Amen. Or uh, 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 any other blemish. Amen. No, it should be said of us, especially as Christians, especially of our people of God. Amen. We should present our, our wife pure. He said she will be holy without fault. Amen. And you, you should learn how to cover their mistakes for them. Amen. You don't expose them. My wife is this, my wife is that. These are learning process we have to do. Some men do it already, so there's no problem. But some of us need to learn. Amen. We shouldn't have spots and wrinkles on our wife. Some, some people will not even use they won't be physically abuse you, but the words they can say to you, oh my goodness, if they beat you, it's even better. Amen. You know, some people can use very abusive words and you, 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 you cry. With it. Oh, some people can really make their wife, they are very abusive. Amen. That's what I want to say. We should, we, should, we should find nice words to say to our wife. We should be lovely. You know, Jesus Christ was always compassionate. We should be lovely. We shouldn't, we shouldn't be so abusive, you know. Some, some people, you see them, oh, why are you divorcing? And they tell you that, oh, my wife and my husband has been abusing her. And you didn't know when it started because you don't see it. You know, you don't see it because before you know, boom, they are divorcing. And you, before you realize that, what happened? Not knowing for years. Verbal abuse. May it not be our portion. Amen. We shouldn't be in a marriage and be abusing our wives. Your children will learn. Even our children, we shouldn't be abusing them with those words. We should correct them anyway with scripture, you know. But we shouldn't be abusing people in our household. You know, if you are here and you are a type of a man that abuses your wife, stop. Amen. Stop. He said he did this to present her to himself as a glorious church. So without spot or wrinkle. Hallelujah. Don't present your wife with spot or wrinkle. Amen. And you also have to be romantic. Amen. If you are in a marriage, as a father, as a husband, you have to consume the marriage. Amen. I think in the Church of Central, I don't know, maybe the Church of Central. But if you, if you are married and you don't consume your marriage, it's grounds for divorce. Amen. How can you marry somebody and you are not consuming the marriage? Second Samuel chapter 20, verse 3. Let's look at what it says. Second Samuel chapter 20, verse 3. That when David came to his palace in Jerusalem, he took ten concubines he had left look after the palace and place them in seclusion. Seclusion, place them somewhere. Their needs were provided for, but he no longer slept with them. So each of them lived like a widow. Hallelujah. He said he provided everything to them. He said all their needs. In some uh, versions of the Bible, he said all their needs were, were provided for. Hallelujah. But he didn't sleep with, he didn't sleep with them. Hallelujah. All their needs were provided for. So it's not thing that I pay the bills, I provide the money. I'm not romantic, that's enough. Hey, consume the marriage. Hallelujah. 
if you don't do that, your wife will live like a widow. You know what a widow is like? A widow is somebody who doesn't have a husband. If you don't consume the marriage, your husband, your wife will live like a widow. You don't want your wife. Some of them cannot stand it. They'll go outside and, and go and, uh, 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 and fornicate or commit adultery. And you blame them for that. So why are you not consuming the marriage? Men, if you're not sick or something stops you, or you're not fasting, you're not sick, from time to time, consume the marriage. This thing is enjoyable any day. Amen. Hallelujah. So let's consume the marriage. This is happening in marriages. Marriages that are long. People who are married for a long time, they, they fight, 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 and they, they ended up not consuming the marriage again. He said, when you do that to your wife, your wife will live like a widow. Hallelujah. Okay, our wives, we cannot be alive and our wife will live like widow. No, no, and that not, should not be said about us. Amen. Our wife will live as like wife. Hallelujah. Our wife will live as like So let's be lovely, you know. And let's, let's go on to John chapter 15. Thank you for, for working with me today. You have been so wonderful. For I love, I have loved you even as the Father has loved me. Amen. So remain in the love. Okay, let's go on. When you obey my commandment, you remain in my love. Amen. So he's talking about obedience right there. You know, there is blessings in obedience. James chapter 1, verse 20, 22 to 24. There's, obedi- there's blessings in obedience. You know, he said, for you know what, for you know that when you, uh, your faith is tested, no, James chapter 1, verse 22. James 1, 22, yes. 1, 22. But don't just listen to God's word. You must do what he says. Otherwise, you're only fooling yourself. Hallelujah. If you can't come to church day in, day out, and don't uh, obey the words of God that we hear. You know, we go to the line on Wednesday to learn Bible study. Friday, we are on the line. We are, doing word, we are learning the word of God. Sunday, we are learning the word of God year round. Other days, there are long week programs. We cannot be hearing all this word of God and don't put them in practice. We are only fooling ourselves. We are not benefiting from it. Amen. Let's go on. But don't, for if you listen to the word and don't obey, it is like glancing at your face in a mirror. You see yourself, walk away, and forget what you look like. Hallelujah. You know, some of us here, we come here, we go, we forget what we said. I like just like watching ourselves in the mirror. As soon as we leave, we don't know how you look like. And the sweat can yeah. So we should we should learn to obey. There's blessings in obedience. Amen. Hallelujah. We should learn to obey the word of God. That's how we can even train our children to be obedient. Amen. If you are disrespectful to authorities in the land, if you are disrespectful to the things of God, if you are disrespectful in the church. Your children are watching you. Very soon, you'll tell them to do that. They'll also disrespect you. Hallelujah. So we should learn to be obedient fathers. Obedient to the word of God. The words that we hear every day, the word of God that we hear every day, we should put them in practice. And it will benefit us. Amen. And as a father, the last thing you should do is to protect your family. Let's look at Luke chapter 11, verse 21. If you don't get anything today, this is what you should take home. Amen. Luke chapter 11, 21. As I put my uh, message to our end, so, so that we have some time to pray. He said, for when a strong man is fully armed and guards his palace, his actions are safe. Amen. Let's go to 21 again. He said, for when a strong man, who is a strong man? A strong man is a man of faith. Faith in mind, how do you get faith? By hearing and doing the word of God. Amen. So you become strong when you are vested in the word of God. Nobody, nobody can deceive you. There's a lot of deception out there on social media. People are saying that Titus is, Titan is Old Testament. People are confusing people in the world. You know? But you, you remain strong man. Not a woman, a strong man. If you are vested in the word of God, your faith is strong. And you are fully armed with the word of God. Amen. Fully armed with the word of God. And you guard your palace. The palace with prayer, you are the palace with love, compassion, time. Spend time with our father, our, ch- our wives and children, and even orphans and widows. Amen. Spend time. If you do that, your possessions are safe. Your wife will be safe. Your children will be safe. Your, your, your parents will be safe. Your, anyone under your roof will be safe. Hallelujah. Every, all your possessions will be safe. Hallelujah. 
I, I pray that um, they will get a message. He said, let's go to verse 22. Verse 22. And so someone even stronger attacks and overcomes or overpowers him, strips him of his weapons, and carries off his belongings. This sounds like the devil to me. Amen. Right? Jesus said that he came to steal, to kill, and to destroy. He said, until someone even stronger attacks him, overpowers him, and strips him of his belongings. Hallelujah. No, you shouldn't allow the devil to do that. When the devil is able to overcome us as men and enters our house, the distraction they leave behind, you cannot imagine. Amen. All right, I will be strong men for God, strong men for Christ. And I hope that uh, the agent of transformation in our household will be better fathers from now on, will be great fathers, our, fa- our children will be cel- celebrate us. You know, there's nothing greater honor for a father than responsibility. We should take our responsibilities very careful, you know, and, 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 and take care of our household. That's what we will be remembered of. Amen. I remember when I was a kid, uh, I go to my hometown in Jamestown. We, we go, we, you know, you know, Ghana funerals are open invite. Just dress and go and sit there. So we go and look for funerals that we want to attend. So many, it's an old city. Every time somebody is dying. So you go and look at the obituary. If your children is so, 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 USA, so, 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 UK, managing director, is uh-huh. that's the funeral we want to attend. But if your children is so, 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 Amasama, Coco Sela, no, 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 we don't. You know, you didn't raise your children. You know that when it comes to that funeral, we will not get anything. Amen. So let's let's be let's be let's let's be good fathers. Hallelujah. So that our next generation will be fruitful and pure. Amen. We can do better than that. Let's clap for the Lord. Amen. Man. The image. Oh, let's do that over again. Man. The image and the glory of God. Man. Strong and courageous. Man. Maximize your potential. potential. Amen. Man. Oh, man, 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 man. Praise the Lord. God bless you, Deacon, for that awesome word. Uh, he said a lot, amen. He said a lot. Uh, and in some way, I believe he was taking it too easy on the man. Yeah, let me let me amp it up small. Let me let me be the, the evil person in the message. He was very good to you all. Yeah. As I'm looking across this pulpit. My, my, my heart is very sad. Yeah. Very sad. Because all those that are in attendance is women. A barely handful of men in this room. Me, you won't, you won't like me when I leave this place. <laughs> you won't like me when I leave Sacramento. Because me, I, I will say it. Our men, and Deacon mentioned it, where, where is the availability? Yes, this week is men's week, and we are indeed celebrating our fathers, as we should. But there also comes time where we need to also be corrected. Amen. This is my first Father's Day with you all. And so I was expecting to see multitude of men come into this place. One thing that Deacon highlighted, but I'm going to add to it, <clears throat> when it comes to the church and fathers, I've come to realize that the woman and the children will be coming to one church, but the man is going to a completely different church. Where, where, what kind of nonsense is that? The 
excuse me to say. Why do I frame it that way? Deacon made a very clear point. Your children are watching. That is who we do this for. We don't do it for ourselves. Hello? Yeah. It will be challenging because you are bringing different doctrine to the house. So when the child is now growing up, their attention is divided. Their attention is divided. And for the men that do not even go to the church, the attention of the child is becoming divided. Because as they grow older, despite the fact that mom has been depositing the word in them, they also see that it is okay to not be as enthusiastic about the things of God. This generation of men, we need the Holy Spirit to help us. Deacons also said that it is okay to be going after the money and going after the things to provide for the home. But it is even more important that your presence is always there for your children and for your wife if you are married. Don't be the kind of man that you will only be satisfied because you are bringing money home and you think you have completed your duties. When Jesus is blessing his church, he is not just giving resources and money to the church. No. He is expressing his love and his kindness to the church. He brings healing to the church. So as a man or as a husband, do you bring healing to your wife? Do you bring encouragement to your wife? Do you bring anything prophetic to your wife? Part of the issue of today's society is that there is no man bringing discernment to the home. There is no man bringing the prophetic word to the home. When a disaster is about to come, as a man, do you identify it? Take note and position your family to escape. Forgive me if I'm preaching again. But I think we need to add to all the great things our deacon has mentioned. This is very, very important. Me, I'm a young father. And I've been blessed to watch my father do his thing as we grew up. And some of the lessons that he taught us along the way that I have not forgotten. And as Deacon mentioned, it's all based on the Word of God. I will look on our calendar very well. We have to invade this sacramental area. We need to host a program specifically for men. Women will not be invited at all. I'm very serious. An all men's retreat. We need it here. Where we lock ourselves in a room as men. And we talk. We talk. That's another thing. And Deacon hinted at it a little bit. I will expound it. He mentioned about depression and these things. That is why men are dying at a rapid pace in this, in this world. They are keeping too much in them. Some of you, you won't say it, but your wives are abusing you like he mentioned. Verbal abuse. You this man, you don't leave, you only do this, you only do that. And you think it doesn't hurt us as men. Me, me, I, I wear my emotions on my sleeve. I'll tell you, I don't like what you are saying what you are doing. 
And if you don't hear me talking, then you know there's a problem. I'm already quiet. But if I'm mute, that's my wife. Men, it's about time that you express yourself a little bit. Don't be afraid that because you express yourself, that it will be used against you down the line. And let me advise our lovely women here. Don't do that. Don't take what your man shares with you and use it against him later in an argument. That is very wicked. Don't do that. Because it, 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 it's already difficult for men to express themselves. And when they finally open up to you, and God forbid something happens down the road and there's an argument, then you want to bring what he shared with you six months ago to the argument. Because you know if you use that one, you have won the battle. But my men, I'm pleading to you as a son. I said this on the regional line. Me, I will always say that I'm younger than all of you. So you have to take me as your son. This one, I'm not your pastor. Take me as your son. And as a son to his fathers, I'm pleading with you that I need you. I need you. Somebody say, I need you. Yeah. I need you. I don't know who is watching this video. But if you are a man, you are hearing this. I need you. I need your presence. I need your affection. Deacon made a very, very good point. What you see today in this world, and we are going to pray about it. Our national head has given us a directive as ministers to charge the churches today to pray about these mass shootings in this country. And then going forward, we will have to even look at law enforcement to maybe roam around this perimeter to make sure that we are secure. Amen. But he made a good point. These mass shootings that we are seeing, it's one of two things going on. As he mentioned, number one, it's either the person committing the crimes don't have a father figure. Or number two, as he also mentioned, the father figure is there, but he is still absent. I love when he said that. Don't be home, and yet you are not home. You don't just deposit seed and then go. Or then you deposit seed and you do not contribute to the growth of that tree. May the Lord have mercy on us. Don't be angry with me, men. I know it's your day. You didn't do this to the women on Mother's Day, right? But God has a different requirement for us. When sin came into the garden, despite the fact that the woman was given the punishment, it was also the man that received his own. And his was a bit more severe. Because if you read scriptures later on, you will see that the Bible says if you don't work, you don't what? You don't eat. And that was the punishment to man. That he has to work for everything that he will gain. Because we sin in failing our duties as a father or as a husband... Now the age span of life has decreased dramatically. It's not because of woman. It's because of man. What did we do when we were confronted by God in the garden? We tried to blame the woman. Or better yet, we even wanted to blame God himself. I think that one made God even more upset. How dare you? Me, I created you and you're coming to tell me that because of me, this woman, this woman, this woman. No. You are the man and I put you in charge. Hallelujah. 
There is a different kind of expectation that God has for us as men. Hallelujah. And by the grace of God, we will get there. As I always tell you here in Sacramento, I see a lot of potentials. Lots of potentials. But it's about your availability. And it's about your willingness and your desire to tap into what God has for you in this area. Amen. Let's stand up briefly. Let's stand up. If you are a man, I want you to pray. I want you to pray. Because... As I said on Friday, everything in this world begins with us. Don't let anyone tell you anything different. Pastor Jehu's father, Apostle Jima, came to Norfolk a couple of years ago, and he said that, oh, we, we, are, the, we the men, we are the creators of, of, of life. And the church was just looking at him like, hey, what are you talking about? But it's very true. Life comes from the man. We are the givers of life. Therefore, the responsibility on us is greater. It's more important. And the last thing I will mention before we pray, and I said this on the regional line, it's about time we stop being the man in our home and rather be the man in the church. What does that mean? It's very easy to be the man at home because it's just you, your wife, and if you have children, they are also included. And in that, that, that house you live in, no one else enters it. So they don't see what is going on there all the time. But in the church of God, you are exposed to the public eye. If you want people to respect God, and you want people to respect God's church, then you as a man need to take charge and take your rightful place in the church of God. We read this Bible and everything in there is about man, 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 man. Only few women are mentioned. But people who don't believe in this Bible that we are preaching, they will look at all our churches and say, what are you preaching and teaching there? You are talking about all these men in the Bible, yet men are not visible in the very place you are teaching. Does it make sense? As I said, may the Lord have mercy. I want this place to set an example. I'm very serious. I've been going to your parties that you are doing in this area. And I sit down quietly and I'm just watching. And it's good. Continue your parties. I'm not here to say don't party. Don't go and say, Pastor, say don't party. Do your parties. It is good. Because it brings the community together. But this place. We can do parties here as well. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit filled parties in this place that will bring even more people to this place to come and experience the power of God. Don't be shy about your God. Don't be shy about your God. He wants to bless you as a man. He wants to give you more as a man. He's just patiently waiting for you to come to him and seek him diligently. Let's begin to open our mouths and pray that God will equip us as men Spirit of the living God, we thank you to be the kind of disciples for the next generation. For the word that has come unto us this morning. We pray that God, you will help us. Give us wisdom. Father, Lord, have mercy upon us as Give us a oh desire, Lord, a burning desire. Equip us, Father Lord Jesus, to, to seek after you, O oh Lord. To take our rightful place in the name of Jesus Christ. In your church, in the name of Jesus. Spirit of the help living us, God. Lord, help us, oh Lord, help us, oh we Lord. pray that you we will bless you, us oh immensely. Lord, need, oh Lord, with all the giftings that are needed, O oh Lord. As Father, Lord. Not just for our homes, but for your church as well. Holy Ghost, help us. Help us, O Lord. Help us, O God. You put us in charge in that garden long ago. 
And Father, you have also put us in charge of your church. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ that we will take our rightful place, O oh Lord, as leaders of your homes, leaders of your church as well, even in the name of Jesus. They kabro sata laba. They kalaba sande rebe rebe. In the rabazi and dolo bolo bolo. Rabaka ta bro sande rebe rebe. They kalaba sandori and dalaba sata. Spirit of the living God, have your way. In the name of Jesus. Rabba tandori and dalaba sande rebe rebe. They kabori and dalaba ziandori and dalaba. Rama sande de be de be de be de be. Ika bori andari andala basata. We also want to pray. One of the struggles of men is spirituality. As I mentioned, you read the Bible, you see all these great and mighty men that are mentioned. But then, in our generation or in our time today. There appears to be a lack of spirituality. We want to pray as men that whatever we have lost along the way, some of us, we were on fire for the Lord when we were teenagers. We would go to, 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 to Bible camps. We would be going to, to Bible schools, going to church, all right, with our friends, doing the things of the Lord. But now it's like because of job. Because now I've married and I, I, I'm, I'm busy with my, my wife. I have children now, so I'm always taking them to school, preparing meals for them, doing so many things that I just don't have that time as I used to. No more excuses. God is ready to bless you again. Hallelujah. He just wants you to surrender yourself. And seek him one more time. I want you to pray as a man. That if you've lost some kind of spirituality with your maker. If your relationship with the Lord has been a little bit down over the years. May today be the beginning of something new. I want to hear you open your mouth and pray. I want to hear you open your mouth and pray. In the name of Jesus. Father God Almighty. I pray that you will help me as a man, O oh Lord, in my relationship with you. I pray that there will be an increase in my relationship with you. I pray that God Almighty, you will continue to be faithful. I pray that in my relationship with you, I will grow closer and closer to you, O oh Lord. In my relationship with you, I'll be more dependent upon your spirit, O oh God. In my relationship with you, I pray that you will give me guidance and more wisdom. In my relationship with you, I pray that my spirituality will increase. In my relationship with you, every spiritual gift you have given me in the past that has gone dormant, may you arise it again in the name of Jesus Christ. We bless you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We want to pray that as a man, you will take again your throne as a priest in your home. We want to pray that God will give us that throne again. Not that we will lord it over anybody, no. It's so that the authority of God himself will be established in our homes. So that righteous order will be established. That our children will grow in the knowledge and in the fear of God. And our wives, if we are, if we are married, will also follow suit to the glory and to the graciousness of our God. Begin to pray, begin to pray, begin to pray. Yes, Lord, help us. Help us to reestablish our priesthood in the home. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Masandori and Alaba Sande de Bebe. In the Rabba Sandori and Alaba Sata. In the Ramazi and the Rebbe, the men will follow for you in the name of Jesus. Ramas and Dori and Alabas, Alabas and the fill us up with your power. Kalabasi and Dolo, fill us up with your power. Ramati and Dori and Alabas and the Rebbe, 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 the
bless you in the name of Jesus. Bless you, O Lord. We have two more prayer points. Our deacon made mention of the fact that when it comes to the love as a man, that also needs to be redefined. When is the last time you told your children that you love them? When is the last time that you made yourself vulnerable in your home? It is not that you want to make yourself as if you are macho, no. But you just don't know sometimes what God can do. When you avail yourself, you'll be surprised at how your family will respond. There have been times that I will feel down and my children can see it on my face. They will look at me and say, even Emmanuel, just a few days ago, Daddy, you look sad. Why do you look sad? Uh, when he said that, I had to quickly let him know that, oh, daddy is fine. Daddy is fine. Just pray for your daddy. It doesn't hurt to open up because you never know what God will use your own family to do in your life. When you share certain things with your wives, You'll be amazed by the response you will get. For those of us that are blessed to still have your mom in your life, when you open up to your mothers, you'll be amazed by what the response will be. And as I've just mentioned, your own children as well. You'll be amazed by how God will use them to calm you down or to bring a sense of peace in your life. But it only will happen if you make a decision to share. To share. Let us pray. Let us pray. Let us pray. That God will enable us as men to be a little bit more open and vulnerable to our own families and our homes. So that his spirit will work through them to bring us a healing blessing. To bring us any kind of blessing that we are in need of. At that very point in time in our lives, we bless you even in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Bless you, O Lord, even in the name of Jesus Christ. As men, may you break us, O Lord, and mold us. Break our hearts, yes. break our hearts, Father Lord, and mold us. Remold us, Father Lord, with your love. Even in the name of Jesus. And finally, we want to pray for our homes. That God will use us to be the shepherd that we have to be in our home. That at any point in time that someone in our house goes wayward, we will be equipped to bring them back in the name of Jesus Christ. When you read that Luke 15 account, the parable of the lost son, the Bible tells us that that young man who took a decision to take his inheritance and go and travel on his own to live his own life, I strongly believe that as he was growing up, his father deposited a lot of valuable information into him so that when he eventually failed on his trek, he came to his senses quickly that I should go home. You see, there are some people, because they don't have that shepherd at the home, when they leave and they fail outside, they now will begin to look for different places to reestablish themselves rather than to come back to the place that they came from. Almighty, hold me with thy powerful hand. We are weak, but thou art mighty. Hold me with thy powerful. 
Father, we want to say thank you and bless you. Yes, indeed, we are weak. Thou art mighty. We pray that you will continue to strengthen us as men to be the shepherds and leaders of your home. Holy Spirit, if at any point in time, that any of our family around us begins to go wayward. May they come to their senses like the lost son did. Only because of the father's teaching in his life. We pray that our teaching to our children and to our families will be permanently placed in their hearts, O oh God. We pray that God Almighty, you will strengthen us and that you will equip us with the resources and the tools to be effective leaders in our homes. We pray that, Father God Almighty, may we not see it as soft. May we not see it as, as, as weak because we have taken a decision to share certain things with our loved ones. But let us count it as strength, O oh Lord, that, Father, you will make us stronger because of it in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray that, Lord God Almighty, not only shall we be heads in our personal homes, but may we be heads in your church as well, even in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray that, Lord, you will continue to deposit your love, that you will continue to help us increase our spirituality and our relationship with you as men. We pray that even as we do these things, we will be equipped enough to raise young warriors behind us, both men and women alike, O oh Lord. All to the glory of your holy name. This we ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Oh, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We want to thank God for the life of our deacon and also our pastor. Can we put our hands together for them? Can we put our hands together for them? God bless them both for leading us. Uh, this morning with the word and also for leading us in our prayer respectively. And so at this time, we have come to a very important part of our service this morning. We are bringing our tithe and our offering. And as has already been announced, uh, because of this special celebration, we are going to be taking a special offering to support the PEMM or the men's ministry, that will be done right after the, our tithe and our offering. And so, as we do always, God bless you for your continuous giving. Everyone joining us virtually, you are able to be a part of this as well. We give through Cash App, we give through my COP app, as well as uh, Zelle. So, whichever one works for you, but if you are in person and you want to do physical cash, uh, you are able to do that as well. Checks, all of that are uh, accepted. And so if we are ready with our tithe and our offering, shall we please be upstanding even as we pray over our tithe and our offering. Father, we thank you. May you bless these hands that are bringing these offerings into your storehouse. We pray that your grace will continue to abound for us. May you continue to bless us in our jobs. Continue to bless us as many, O oh Lord, that seek promotion. May you give it to them as many, O oh Lord, that are even looking for jobs. May you grant it unto us so that we are always and always able to give more than you can ever give us. We thank you for this morning. We bless you for how far you have brought us as a church. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The choir can help us. Awesome God, mighty God. Oh, awesome God, mighty God. Shall we be upstanding, please? We give you praise. Awesome God, we give you praise. God, oh, you are highly lifted up, awesome God, you are highly lifted up, mighty God, you are highly lifted up, you are highly lifted up, oh, awesome God. Up. 
mighty God, awesome God, awesome God. Amen. So once again, uh, God bless you. Uh, we will take a quick special offering. Uh, I believe a target has been given to us, Papa. 800. 800 is the target that has been given to us. So please uh, help us uh, do due diligence to this amount. And so it's been open. Uh, please let's do our best and uh, bring it to the glory of the Lord. Let us do it to the glory of the Lord. Once again, the virtual platforms are on your screens. If you wanted to do a physical cash, you can bring the physical cash as well. And please, uh, for those that are given virtually, please indicate, especially with this one, that uh, this is for the special offering for uh, the men's ministry. Amen. Oh, amen. amen. Are we together? Amen. amen. All right. You are highly lifted up. Awesome God. You are highly lifted up. Mighty God. Amen. Yeah, I'm here again. Because we want to raise this for our men. As I mentioned before, uh, this is going straight to the nation. Amen. And uh, I know youth in Pensa, they have curriculums. I know evangelism, they have curriculums. Children's ministry, they have curriculums. But for the men, I don't see it. And I believe strongly that this funding will help towards getting some resources for our men. Amen. And so please, let's do well to give to the Lord. 800 is nothing at all. Amen? Oh, the amen is very weak. I say 800 is nothing at all. And so please, let's do well to support our men. Eight people can give 100 each, easily. I'm already adding my 100, so I need seven people Amen. to brother, also give that. Amen. Brother Cassius has given us 100. Amen. And our Two. brother gave us 200. Amen. So right now, we just have 200. 600 left. Our deacon is giving 100. Amen. Okay. Three. 50, amen, 350. So we are left with how much? 450. Another 50, amen. 500, 400 is left. Please, my math is not great. Another 50, amen. 350 is left. Fifty, amen, amen. Three hundred is left. Three. 
300 is left to support our men's ministry. Amen. Oh, 100. 100 from our brother. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. 200. 200. The faster we do this, the quicker we are out of here. Amen. 50 from Brother Roland. Amen. 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 God bless you. God bless you. 150 is left. 150 is left. Oh, Mama Coroma, come and see. God bless you. 100 from our mama. Amen. 50 is left. $50. And we are done. Oh, yeah? You sure? Our mama Hetty says she will cover your, your, your tab. Oh, you will take it. The 50. And an extra 50. Amen. Amen. So that's 850. We are at 850. You can continue to give. Yes. 50. Amen. 900. 900. 900. I agree with our chairman. Amen. 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 We are at 900. We are at 900. If you want to continue to give, by all means. 50 from so. Thickness Linda on Cash App. 50. Amen. We are at 950. 50 from Sister Rejoice. Amen. We are at 1,000. And I, I want to use this to encourage you as well. As our Father rightly mentioned, you can be donating to the ministries of the church. Amen. Don't just wait until we are coming up like this because it's Father's Day, so give. No. If you are a man here and you want to donate to the men's ministry, the church has stopped taking dues. Let me make it very clear. The church has stopped taking dues. You don't pay dues in your ministries anymore. But if you want to give to support your ministry so that in the future, like I said, I want to do an all-men's retreat, it's not going to be cheap. We want to do it very well. Hallelujah. I'm talking about we're not coming to this church. I want to rent a hall. Hello? There are some very beautiful, I've seen some beautiful places in this area. Roseville, Rockland, Folsom. There are some beautiful places that have some good, 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 good uh, 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 banquet halls there. I want us as men to get into this place and seek the face of God. Hallelujah. And that does not come cheap. So if you know, and I'm using this as a segue, forgive me, Elder Sam. We have the youth ministry camp coming on. And we know the price is 200 per head. I'm appealing to you, the parents. Do well to help your children. They have been disturbing me that they want to go. And I want them to go as well. I cannot go as a regional leader, regional pastor, and my own district has not come to this camp. The next call that I will get will be from Apostle himself as to why you, the hosting minister, and your children did not come to youth camp. It's not a good look at all. So please... Yes, 200 sounds like a lot, but if you see this camp, and I will share the link with us as well on the platform, it's a very beautiful retreat center for these young ones, and that 200 is going to cost their meals, cover their meals as well as their lodging for that weekend. So all of that is inclusive, hallelujah. But again, I use this to say, when you give to the ministries, whether it's men's ministry, women's ministry, evangelism ministry, youth and pensa, or children's ministry, these funds can be used down the road to host very, very extravagant programs. That is why you see many other churches thriving the way they thrive. It's because their people give without being told, or they don't wait until their week has come before they decide to give. They give because they know that what they give will be used to the glory of God. Amen. Please, is anyone else coming? 
I believe we are at a thousand for our men's ministry. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you and we bless you. We give you glory. We give you honor. Thank you for helping us to give to your ministry today. We pray that whatever has been given will be used as a resource to buy the tools needed to equip our men for this ministry and for their lives with you. Even in Jesus' name we pray. Let us all say amen. Amen. God bless you, Papa, for helping out. And God bless you all for your continuous giving. Shall we put our hands together for ourselves? I think we have done well. We have done well. God bless you. Uh, please help us. Please help us. So quickly, we are wrapping up. I know the women are putting so much stuff together for us to celebrate after we close. So please don't be in a hurry to go. Um, is there anybody that is worshiping with us for the first time today? We just want to take a few minutes out, and that is for the youth camp. But is there anybody here worshiping with us for the first time today? Just a quick wave, and we will welcome all of you. God bless you. God bless. Shall we put our hands together for our, our sister and our mother here? Oh, shall we put our hands together for her? Mama, please, can you tell us your name? My name is Jemima Nalam Lilamsi. God bless you, Mama Jemima. Thank you for joining our service today. Uh, we hope you have been blessed. And so, uh, when service is over, our pastor would like to meet with you in the office briefly, uh, just to get to know you. And uh, please know that this is home. This is your home. So please, uh, don't be a stranger here. Feel free to come and fellowship with us anytime. Amen. And so quickly, our announcement. Kodeo, can we have it back? Pastor already spoke uh, extensively about this. We are pleading with all of the parents. Um, please help us. Even if you don't have a son or a daughter who is in the youth category, you can donate uh, to our course so that we can take all of our youth to this camp. Um, it's going to be at the Heartland Christian Camp. Uh, beautiful camp, as Pastor said. The registration fee is $200, and we have up to Wednesday to submit all the names. So we have to submit all the names uh, by Wednesday. So please help us. It's going to be exciting. We are going to pray, seek the face of God. It's summer. We haven't done this in about two years because of COVID. So it makes it even more exciting. So please help us. Parents, once again, help us. All of the youth that I have spoken to would like to go. I think the only challenge now is who is paying for them. So parents, uh, please help us so that all of us will be able to go uh, for this camp. It's coming off July 8th through the 10th. July 8th through the 10th. So God bless you for helping us in that regard. Amen. And also for uh, the rest of the week, our regular activities will be on uh, six, the 6 12 prayers. We pray at 12 p.m. for just 15 minutes of the day, 15 minutes, 12 p.m. and also 6 p.m. And then we come on for morning devotion twice a week on Tuesdays and Thursdays. That is on the prayer line, Tuesdays and Thursdays from 5 to 6 in the morning, Tuesdays and Thursdays, twice a week. But for the rest of the week, Monday through Friday, we pray 15 minutes twice every day, 12 p.m. and also 6 p.m. So please uh, be a part of that. And that is the prayer conference line. That is our prayer conference line. If you don't have it, you can see me after service. I will give you that number. Um, on Wednesday, we meet on Zoom for our Bible studies. So please take note, Wednesday, Bible studies. Friday, we will be on Zoom for our Friday service. Stockton will be meeting um, Saturday morning on the same Zoom platform uh, for our scriptural studies. Stockton is meeting on Saturday uh, for our scriptural studies. Uh, please join us if you have the time. It's from 7 to 8, 8, 8.15 a.m. 7 to 8.15 a.m. And I believe that is all the announcement. Uh, Final one, Stockton is resuming soon. Amen. Oh, amen. Stockton is resuming very soon. Uh, I believe we have had to push the date a little bit. And so July, July, we'll be resuming 
at our new place of worship. And um, we, our services on Sundays are going to be from 4 p.m., 4 p.m. to 6. So even after service, if you happen to be in the area, you can still come by and worship with us. Amen. 4 to 6 p.m. on Sundays. And we'll be resuming from July. So God bless you. Um, can we please get the women's ministry leader here? I believe they have something to share with us. Dickness Linda, if we can get her here quickly. Um, amen. You're a good, good father. That's who you are. That's who you are. That's who you are. And I'm loved by you. That's who I am. That's who I am. That's who I am. You're a good, good father. That's who you are. That's who you are. That's who you are. And I'm loved by you. That's who I am. That's who I am. That's who I am. God bless you. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers. Indeed, we are so grateful. Um, first of all, happy Father's Day to our Father in heaven. And uh, we are so grateful for his protection and everything he does for us. Unconditional love. We are so grateful for all fathers. We have father of the house, right, our pastors. And um, some of us, we have our husbands. My husband, happy Father's Day. All the fathers in the house, we are so grateful. We cannot do anything without you. You know, our fathers play a huge role in our lives. Either um, you are being a father figure to someone or you are a father, you play a huge role. And so we really appreciate you. We don't take you for granted. I know we don't have a lot of um, chance to tell you how much we appreciate you, but we do appreciate you and we want you to know that. Um, we wish we could do more things for you. We wish we could uh, meet you every part of your need. Without you, we can't really be a community, um, a home, or a society. Um, you are a huge part of our lives in this church, in our family, and everything um, in our lives. And we, we really don't have enough words. And we want to appreciate you. So the women all together... <laughs> Um, Sacramento women, uh, we came together and we wanted to appreciate all of you. Uh, we have a token for our pastors. And then after church, don't be in a hurry to go. We have a presentation for all the, women, um, the men too, right? We have something for every man here. So don't be in a hurry to go. We put together a nice puzzle for you that we know that you will enjoy. And happy Father's Day to all of you. So without much ado, I want to call on our pastor. <laughs> Thank you. So on behalf of the women's ministry, Sacramento District Women's Ministry, all the women in the district, we want to present this to you. It looks small. We wish we could get you something huge. <laughs> You deserve more than what we have, but this is really deep from our heart, and we want to tell you that we appreciate you, we love you, and we are here. Thank you so much. God bless you. All right. Oh, shall we celebrate the women? Shall we celebrate the women? God bless you. God bless you so much for always taking care of us. Amen. And so on that note, we are bringing our service this morning to a close. As our deaconess said, uh, something has been prepared. I think there is more than enough for everyone here. So please don't be in a hurry to go. I know it's men's day, but all of our women and our sisters, uh, please uh, join us. And let's celebrate the Lord in the lobby right afterwards. Our brother Isley would lead us in a closing prayer and our Father will bless us. God bless you all. Shall we please be upstanding?
we bow our heads and pray. Heavenly Father God, we thank you for today. We thank you for this service. Thank you for allowing us all to learn something new today. We thank you for our fathers, Lord, and we thank you for those who once were fathers, Lord. We, thank, we just thank you for the lives. We thank you for our pastor, Father God, and we thank you for the church. We ask that as we all go out into a new week, we ask that you will guide us. We ask that you protect us. We ask that your, your blood will be over our lives, Father God, and all of our families. We thank you for um, all the children that are here today, Lord. I ask that you will continue to uh, give them bright futures and that they will continue to succeed in life, Lord. We thank you for all that you have done and all that you continue to do. And in Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. Let's lift up our hands. And as you leave, of course, come and give me a happy Father's Day handshake. Amen. Special welcome to our sister Roxanne all the way from Stockton. Amen. And then also our sister Patience. As for this one, if I don't say it, the whole family will come after me. Amen. So sister Patience all the way from Fresno, God bless you all for being here with us today. And God bless you all as well for being here to worship and fellowship with the Lord. Let's lift up our hands. Father, unto you we give glory. May your presence be with us this week, even as we celebrate you today being the father of all fathers. May you continue to guide us and strengthen us all the days of our lives, and may this week be a fruitful week, full of your blessing and full of your grace and mercy. Even as we go to our various homes in peace, let us all say amen.